Okay, so as you all now know, the uh, title of this particular video is quite provocative. I am actually asserting that most police officers are fucking bad. Now, I'm not the kind of person who will actually make assertions that I cannot uh, adequately defend. So, you will find that I definitely can, uh, uh, you know, defend what I'm saying here. But before I get into the, the crux of the matter, let me try to, um, you know, ease the pain of what I'm about to say. Uh, first and foremost, I think that one of the biggest problems that we have with policing, and uh, uh, this is a video, I'm, I mean, honestly, I really didn't intend to make right now. Right now, I'm, I was intending to make a video on some NBA ball players, uh talking about matter of fact the title is going to be something very provocative about stop being whores even though uh the actual video had nothing whatsoever to do with their sexual proclivities this is something that will actually make me some money uh from these nba ball players and i actually need some money however that video is going to be a little more in, uh involved and this one i can do quite quickly and so i decided that i would go ahead and do this one mainly because you know, I mean, too many police officers are targeting men who look just like me. Uh, killing men who look just like me. And I am sick and tired of this. And I think that we need to put our focus in a particular area that can actually stop some of this from happening. And so, therefore, I'm actually making this video uh, in light of, of, of the number of people who have... We have died recently, you know, Walter Scott, Eric Harris, uh, more recently Freddie Gray down in Baltimore, and Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, all, all of them. We need to, to keep in mind that, for instance, first of all, had, had not the video surfaced of the Walter Scott murder uh, on tape by a police officer, none of us would, well, most of us would not be questioning uh, the police version of things when we hear that the police had to do such and such and the criminal was such and such etc etc now we know that they actually lie and cover shit up now before i get into like i said the whole notion and believe me when i when i finish what i'm about to say you will probably agree with me as well that most police officers are fucking bad and I say that first and foremost, uh, having said, you know, once you know that I know some police officers, I know some police officers personally, very few. Uh, I'll be 60 this year. There's one retired police officer who was a former uh, state trooper, around 65, 66, likes to smoke weed, come by my crib, and we might smoke from time to time. Well, I had to stop because now I have congestive heart failure, but he still is. You know, he's still smoking. Good guy have no problem with him and uh, you'll find out too that I have no problem with people who smoke weed because uh, that's just me but all that aside first of all we have to look at the fact that the real evil the real um, shall we say eh, Ooh, what's the word I'm looking for? Hope I can cut this out. Um, the real uh, uh, animus that police officers seem to have toward black men was placed there by other people. And by other people, I mean the politricians who, and I don't call them politicians because in many ways they practice politics and not politics. And the politics that they practice is to try to turn around uh, the whole concept of being a peace officer to that of being a soldier on American soil. Because once you stop uh, looking at uh, these people as peace officers, which is what they typically have been throughout most of the history of our nation, and you start to declare war on particular things, first and foremost we know that if you are a peace officer then collateral damage is unacceptable 
However, if you are at war, then collateral damage becomes much more acceptable because the most important thing that you're thinking about if you are in a war situation is to make sure that you do not leave any troops back behind. Uh, your allegiance is not to keeping some particular peace international or whatever. Your allegiance is to the troops that are there beside you to make sure that we all go back home uh, at the end of the day. And this is the same mentality that we have now placed in our police officers, formerly peace officers, because now we are saying that the most important thing is that they make it home at the end of the day because they are at war. The war against crime, the war against drugs. You can blame Tricky Dicky and all the rest of them, uh, uh, Ronald Reagan and all the rest of them for this kind of bullshit. Because once you actually couch things in terms of a war, then those particular constituents who are the ones who you deem to be most likely the perpetrators of such and such that is bad are the ones that you can go and kill. I mean, we go and we kill people with drones all the time. We we kill Al-Qaeda. If we end up killing some of their family members, we call that shit collateral damage. It's the same damn thing when you have the war on crime in inner city neighborhoods and somebody happens to be killed as a result of that fuck that doesn't matter now I say this because I want you to understand that I do know that the plight of the police officer and the situation that they have been put into is not necessarily of their own doing but because things have been couched in terms of uh, the war on crime they now think of themselves and act as soldiers is an entirely different mentality than that of a peace officer their allegiance is not to the people that they are policing their allegiance is to each other now this is why I say most police officers are fucking bad when and and I, I feel the same way about this say relative to to racism not that most white people are racist but I have I have felt from the time I was about 18 years old and again like I said I'll be 60 this year nothing has changed my mind whatsoever on this subject I believe that 15 to 25 percent of white America are truly racist 15 to 20 percent are truly liberal Unfortunately, that means that the largest group, uh, somewhere between, let's see, 15, let's see, we say in 70 to, do, 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 anywhere from 50 to 70 percent, are actually apathetic. They just don't give a fuck. As long as certain things do not affect them and their family and their world, then everything is hunky dory, everything is cool. Not racist, not liberal, just completely fucking apathetic. And that's the state of racism in America probably the state of racism all across the fucking world now when you start to look at these police officers okay I would say that what most of you believe is true most of you believe that only 10 to 20 percent of police officers are actually bad actors meaning they actually do the bad shit they're the ones who would shoot a Walter Scott as he is running away they are the ones who would choke the fuck out of uh, uh, an Eric uh, uh, Garner like what happened in New York they are the ones who would fucking gun down a Michael Brown okay however even though the percentage of bad actors is relatively small within the ranks of the police officers because they have this code of blue this us against them mentality because they feel as if they are fucking at war with us when it comes down to it half of the rest so now we're talking what uh, 10 to 20 percent we're talking about somewhere between 
uh, 45 and 50 percent of the police officers that are left, half of them that are left, are willing to help cover up the shit that the bad actors do. Now, because of this shit, it means that most police officers are fucking bad. They may not be the bad actors, but because of their willingness to cover up for their fucking buddies, they are just as fucking bad. This is why, right about now, they have a cause for uh, uh, the black police officer who showed up right after Walter Scott was gunned down brutally and who obviously probably saw, we, we, we can question that, but it, it should be open to investigation whether or not he actually saw the officer come over and throw the taser down. Because, and, and we also need to know what he wrote in his report. Because if it, if it seems as if he is trying to actually cover up for this guy in his initial report prior to the video becoming public, then that is even more reason for us to question whether or not these police officers' allegiance is to us or them. Because it appears as if they feel as if they are utterly at war with black men. And it doesn't even give a... F it what makes it so fucking bad? It doesn't even matter whether the police officer is white, black, Hispanic, or whatever the fuck. They all, under that damn code of blue, seem to feel as if they are at war with men, black men, who look just fucking like me. This is my problem. And until police officers are willing to police themselves in the manner in which they should, this is the standard. This is the way it just fucking is. Until you're willing to go to internal affairs and go through all the channels that you need to go through to get rid of the fucking bad police officers that you fucking know are there. How many times have we First of all, looked at the pictures, right, of the bad police officers, maybe two, three, four, six, ten, beating the fuck up out of some guy that they shouldn't be beating. And then we have like another 10, 15, 20 motherfuckers over here as onlookers. Not one of the motherfuckers coming up there saying, hey, look, bro, this is wrong. This isn't how we treat our citizens. Not one of them. That makes them fucking bad, too, because they're not doing a goddamn thing to protect and serve. Now, you want to remove the stigmatism? You want to remove the actual fact of most police officers fucking being bad? Then, you know balls in your court it's time for you to do something about this shit all right my name is howard e barrett jr and i approve this fucking message peace